All right, KYA here bringing you an up-to-date video from Nationals. Competition concluded today. We've got head coach Vic Wharton. Vic's going to talk to us a little bit about the competitive team with KYA this season. Vic, we just want you to know, uh, we just want to know, can you talk to us about this group of athletes and how they persevered this summer? Well, we all know that it's been a very difficult year, and uh, it's been a COVID year. We've had to deal with uh, the, the fact that we had a pandemic going on, and there was a lot of situations where kids weren't able to compete. We all felt really concerned about them not being able to get certain times and, and distances and, and, and heights and jumps and things of that sort. But uh, the ones that showed up, they had... Uh, a different kind of uh, perseverance that we haven't seen before. Um, it caused me uh, and I think the rest of the staff to coach really, really hard uh, because we appreciated the fact that these kids showed up every day at practice. And the result of that was they came here with laser focus in the Sunshine State and uh, we took home a lot of hardware, a lot of medals. All right. Well, speaking of that, can you tell us about some of your favorite performances this summer, whether they were, you know, in practice or in competition? What what things stood out to you? Well, I'll tell you, you know, uh, we our, our season ended in March with uh, basically one track meet. Um, the next track meet that happened was our developmental meets, and our competitive team used those meets to be prepared for uh, the inevitable, which was the Junior Olympics. We weren't quite sure that that was going to happen, um, but I saw some really spectacular performances at our developmental meets from our competitive kids. We used that as uh, pretty much a basis and a template. Um, some of the performances that I've seen, uh, Rebecca Spierdallis, she has done a tremendous job at some of our early performances and even when we went out of state uh, for our South Carolina meets. Uh, she was one that, uh, that progressed throughout the season and uh, culminated in a lot of hardware for her here in the Sunshine State. Um, our throws, we had a lot of throws kids that uh, had done really well down here. Um, uh, Bryce Thompson, I was really impressed with his consistency in PR today and metal in the discus. Uh, very impressed and uh, excited about what he's going to do. When we get back home and continue to work, he actually came to me today after meddling in the discus and was really excited to get back to work and work on a few fine details to get him to uh, 145 feet. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm just excited. You know, those are just some of the kids that have done really well uh, throughout the year. Uh, Milo Willits, uh, who is our only national champion. 200 meter hurdles. I think he has a bright, bright future. I'm so excited to get back to Knoxville and work with him. He's got one more year in the 200 meter hurdles, and I think he's got a three second PR coming up next year, uh, and then which will set him a strong base when we move to 400 meter hurdles. Very excited about his future as well. Yes, yeah, speaking of Milo Willis, that was a great uh, national championship win for him. Uh, as far as the athletes, uh, do you have anything that you would say impress you most about them? Obviously, you talked about a few uh, specific ones there, but anything in terms of their resilience and practice, so even those who maybe didn't make the trip? Uh, most definitely. Uh, we, we've had several kids that didn't make the trip. Um, we have some seniors that already committed to their colleges and were already satisfied with some of their performances. They PR'd at our last developmental meet, and they just didn't feel that the junior Olympics was necessary. They already accomplished what they wanted to accomplish in their uh, uh, high school career. Um, but you know, at the same time, I think that uh, it, it's uh, moving forward with the whole COVID coaching thing. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the kids develop that are not used to this type of thing. Gotcha. Uh, what can you tell us about your staff and what they meant to the team this year? The staff has been absolutely fantastic through this whole year. You know, we've had to take temperatures. We've had to keep kids separated. We have to make sure that their masks are worn. You know, we're washing hands. 
uh, things of that sort, you know. So the staff has been really good with the whole uh, uh, COVID-19 and understanding that this is a new era of coaching that we have to deal with. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, they were able to be still detailed in their instruction during this whole pandemic and uh, keeping the kids laser focused through the midst of it all and making sure the, the instruction is being um, uh, uh, utilized to the kids uh, that they understand. Uh, you know, uh, so it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you know, it's, it's probably going to be what we have to do from now on going forward. Uh, with that being said, um, we had some coaches that really took to some kids and pulled out the best in them. Uh, Michael Spooner did a wonderful job with uh, taking on some distance kids and, and, and getting them to medal, uh, uh, you know, taking them under the wing and not actually uh, uh, understanding the importance of making sure that we have a short season uh, and not overworking them. You, our season is different, so we got to take into consideration that with this whole situation with the with, with the virus, that uh, our season was going to be short, so we had to change our workout schedule. We were talking today that uh, we had to take some things out from our usual coaching template because of uh, the pandemic. You know, uh, and it was not just on the distance perspective, on the scripture perspective too. Because of it being a short season, because of it being a pandemic, because of a, 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 a junior Olympic that, that is going to be somewhat diluted, uh, it changed the way our schedule would be and some of our workouts would be. So I was really impressed with the way the coaches were able to identify with these are changing times and workouts that they had may have been doing for 15 years, all of a sudden, bam, have changed and now they adjusted the workouts and still was able to get progress to the children, to the athletes. Right, I'm going to tie this one in. Do you want to say anything about Mike Miller and Daryl oh, Sullivan? Yes. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Uh, Mike Miller did a fantastic job. Um, he's one of our uh, coaches that uh, is not um, just specialized in one area. He's a coach that can uh, cross trained several different athletes and, and that's exactly what he did. Uh, Mike and myself are very similar in, in our expertise and we uh, we both kind of tag team uh, in a lot of different directions with the athletes as far as jumps is concerned and as far as sprints is concerned and make sure there's the same detail and changing up workouts and, and uh, just the great communication that the coaching staff has done for a lot of athletes that uh, cross training and might have been in multi areas, throws, sprints, distance, 800, 400, things of that sort. Daryl Sullivan has done a fantastic job with our jumpers. Um, you know, he's, a, he's an athlete that, that uh, still competes and coaches. But, uh, you know, when I watch him coach, I think he's a guy that, um, with coaching, I think he actually becomes a better athlete himself. And we see that a lot of times in young coaches that are still competing. They end up being a better coach because they're still competing and trying to transfer that information to the child. And at the same time, they end up becoming a better athlete because of the information that they're trying to transfer to the athlete. So I, I saw him become a better coach this year, and I saw his athletes become better jumpers. Uh, Jacob Sabota, Josh Sabota, they've been a, an incredible asset to our program. Uh, our kids really love them. They give a lot of different types of information when the kids work with both brothers. Um, as far as uh, uh, different types of tidbits of information that one may have, one may have the other. But fantastic duo with our bros group. Bill Schmidt uh, has done wonderful in uh, our javelin and his little bits of information. He's, he's definitely helped out in helping the Sabotas along with a little bit of information on being a better coach. So our whole coaching staff has helped out with the athletes. They've also helped out with each other as far as communication with each coach, as far as communicating uh, our athletic plans and uh, workouts for our athletes. So 
it's, re it's really been uh, a really good job as far as everybody together communicating, making sure we get the information transferred to the athletes and everything. Kelsey DeLapp has done a great job with our long jumpers. Uh, she's extremely detailed. She's probably one of the most detailed coaches of anyone on our staff. Um, she's done a wonderful job with uh, getting the best out of our kids and uh, making sure that when they show up to meets, they got their number right there. We don't have to do anything to struggle with uh, finding their spot or switching their feet. It's already done to perfection, and uh, we've had some really good PRs with that as well. I want to also mention Mary Kay Longmire, who happens to be uh, the head track coach at Anderson County. Um, I do remember her when she was coming through the program herself as a young man. But uh, she is uh, definitely progressing as a young coach, young distance coach, with a lot of detail and um, working closely with Spooner. They've done a great job uh, together all year, and uh, I really hope she stays with us for the long term. All right, and uh, finally, you know, the, it sounds great. Like this summer, the kids have really just enjoyed being out there. The coaches, sounds like we have a phenomenal group of coaches going forward, something else to build on. Uh, we learned a few things from this summer, not just with COVID-19, but also this meet in general, getting to see other kids, other teams who've been trying to, to work through it as well. What we've learned this week along, and, and on top of the entire summer how do you see this summer propelling this team into the future of the KYA summer competitive track team? Well, I, I see a lot of different things. I see, um, you know, I see our, our developmental program uh, with that continuing on as it is. I see a lot of those kids looking at our competitive kids uh, uh, with a bit of, of, of excitement, like, wow, I really want to be on that team. You know, I'm going to work hard in, in my development so I can join that special, you know, Knoxville Youth Athletics organization. Uh, they want to travel with us. We're, we're, we're in the beautiful Sunshine State, you know. So, so it's one of those things where I think our team is going to grow in the future. Um, I think it'll be a situation where uh, instead of 27 athletes, we're going to have 127 athletes at state. Uh, next year, we're going to Houston. We're going to push to uh, make sure we get as many as qualified as we can. We want to uh, continue on with the excitement, uh, building a program, uh, making sure we look under every crevice, every rock uh, for athletes that are enthused. Um, Knoxville Youth Athletics is not a program that tries to look for kids that are necessarily elite. We look for kids that want to have fun. That's pretty much the premise that, that we want to put out to the community is that this this is a fun sport and we are a fun program. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy your rest of your evening there with the ocean behind you and a nice backdrop. That's Coach Vic Wharton, head coach of the Knoxville Youth Athletics Summer Competitive, KYA Summer Competitive Team.